Radio Great 12, this is How to EGD, and we are smacking your final exams. And we're doing that by going deep into what you can expect in your two papers, paper one and paper two. We've just gone through paper one, we finished mechanical and analytical in paper two, and we're now looking at question two loci of a cam and a loci of a point of a mechanism, or you can get one of these okay so either both of these or just the one or just the other it's going to be 20 percent, which is roughly about 40 marks in this paper so big and important part of this paper let's look at what this two will entail okay first things first locus of a cam if they do ask that they can ask you the principles of a cam in complex applications the camshaft and the follower details, so you'll either have to draw the camshaft and the follower, complete displacement graph you must be able to draw, complete cam profile, the motion can be uniform, simple harmonic, uniform acceleration and retardation. I've made a video in the how to EGD list of videos that actually discusses these, so I won't do this in this video, but make sure you watch that. Then the direction has to be emphasized, the follower may be placed at any angle and the follower may be wedge shaped or a roller. If they then ask you a loci of a mechanism, the principles of a loci of a point on schematic drawing of the moving components of a mechanism will be asked maximum three points at a time. That can be very complex. Make sure in these drawings you show all your construction um, and that your curves are neatly drawn. If you do not have a French curve, you can do it freehand and uh, please don't be penalized here if it is inaccurate or uh, untidy you can be penalized okay that's your loci of a cam and loci of a mechanism please make sure be sure they will not ask a loci of a helix it's very clear it's only a cam or a mechanism let's look at last year's paper now last year they asked of course the helix and the cam this they will not ask this year they will not ask a helix this might be replaced of course by a mechanism but um, we're just going to look for the example that was required here the cam so what you're going to do is you're going to take your time and you read through what is given. Okay, the starting point, zero degrees of the displacement graph on the drawing sheet, all right? Then the motion of the cam, and they give the description. They do not give the displacement height because you have to go and be able to determine it. How do I do it with my learners? Okay, here's the hack. You're going to start off, whenever you look at the motion and determining the height, you just start with a line anywhere on your piece of paper, Okay. Then it says there's a dwell period for the first 45. Okay, so we're still at zero. Then it descends 44 millimeters. I let my learners draw a line, make an arrow, and call this 44. Okay, with uniform motion over the next 45 degrees. So uniform motion is just... Okay, then it descends 24 millimeters with simple harmonic motion over the next. So it descends another 24. So we add that, we label that, that's 24. Then after that, it rises 42. So now it starts to rise again. That's 42. Okay. Uh, and then it returns to the starting position. So that's the remainder of this. What we determine here is that the total height is 44 plus 24, which is 68. That is the total height of your displacement. That is, in other words, the vertical scale, 68 here. They will give you the horizontal scale. In this case, 120 millimeters is equal to three, that is 360 degrees. Okay, now you're going to get started with your height and your length. And I'm going to draw the men memo out here. This is it. Here we go. Beautiful memo. And let's look at what you are going to get marks for. Okay, so if you look... Uh, at this, the construction is going to be absolutely key, okay? Uh, so, did you get the length at 120? Your height, is that correct? Did you do your 12 divisions and did you label those divisions, 30, 60, 90, etc.? Did you label the displacement diagram? That's all, and your scale, is that clearly visible? All right? Then, your first, of course, is your rest, and then it's the uniform motion, all right? And then you get to your simple harmonic, um, the construction method I explained in a previous video, not going to do that, but how I remember it with this arc here is when you think of simple harmonic, it's almost like a harmony or a song, which, you know, goes kind of in a circle if you try and keep tune. So that reminds me of simple harmonic. And then you've got your acceleration in this part and over to, again, uniform motion. Okay, that's it. That's a quick look into the cam, 
Make sure they're going to give you marks for these qualities and these lines and each one of these lines. Of course, you're going to have to subdivide. There's a main 30 degrees, but you're going to have to subdivide it to get these curves accurate. You're going to need six points and six points up here. Same on this end, and therefore is those divisions. Look at that video in the how to HD list of videos for grade 12s. Okay, let's look at the year before last year where they actually just asked the cam. And remember, even this year, they can ask either a cam or a mechanism or both of them. Now, this year, uh, 2019, they just asked the actual cam, but this was the full cam that was required of the learners and I also have with me the actual memo let me get that out of here so again this one starts off with the follower at the bottom it's a wedge shaped follower you have your cam uh, shaft and all the other details as well as your actual motion you're going to use that to then come up with your cam and displacement diagram okay uh, this first part here is again the uniform acceleration and retardation so it accelerates, then it slows down. Then you have your uniform motion and your simple harmonic at the end. They are going to ask you all three of these, so please be prepared. Do not just think it's going to be easy, grade 10 or 11 standard. They're going to have all three. It's complex motion that's required. Make sure you know how to draw this. Then from this, of course, you're going to project your actual cam. One thing that I would actually add onto this memo is the fact that your camshaft must please be hatched. Okay, and then your direction of rotation is important. Make sure you get all your different points and draw this nice and neatly. These are easy marks for you. Uh, it's roughly about 20 to 30 minutes on a question like this. Okay, I've added these questions in the download below. I've added these questions in the description below, so please take a look at that. Then, let's look at what can be expected if they ask a mechanism. Remember, they will not ask a helix, only a mechanism. Now, these examples are in the actual JPEGD workbook, all right? And these are the memos, but you can go and look at more examples in your workbook. It's a simple question of a machine, okay? And then you've got your detail, but you also have your actual schematic drawing here, okay? And with that, you then have to use to determine your mechanisms. Again, these videos have been made, but the same things will be important. The construction, showing the direction of rotation, and plotting these lines. A lot of this is up to you to actually practice and make sure you can draw mechanisms with absolute confidence. Radio. We're going to go on to isometric drawings next. Thank you for watching. Now it's your turn.